Okay. And he said, and uh, sorry, you were you were continuing. I, I kind of took you for a, I diverted you with the quantum physics. What other aspects do people start to show after they have contact? Well, I basically gave you the, the rundown. Um, mediumship is a big one. A lot of contactees start telling me, well, I'm seeing shadow people. I'm like, well, shadow people, what do you mean? And like these dark figures. I'm like, this is, I think, right along the same lines. A lot of contactees talk about how they walk by a TV and it will fuzz up or a radio or they have real trouble with electromagnetic equipment. Here's a perfect example, a lady from Seattle. I interviewed her. She had a contact experience with gray suited, you know, silver suited grays who came to her bedroom one night. She woke up, her legs were up. There was physical evidence that there was an encounter. And uh, she went to work that day and blew up her computer. So she called her IT guy and went to go make copies, blew up the copier and called the guy and was like, oh, I, I broke the copier, sorry, and went and broke the fax machine. She says, I don't know, everything I touched just blew up. This happened to Ramon, the guy I mentioned who saw the reptilian humanoid. He worked as a welder and had this big machine, I forget what he called it, but it was a huge electromagnetic device that he blew up over and over again until they took him to the doctor, forced him to go see the doctor because they thought he was doing something. And they're like, is it your boots? You know, he's like, I've been wearing these boots. You know, they were metal tip boots. He's like, it's not these. <laughs> they couldn't find anything wrong with him. But every time he went on this machine, it went down. And they will, he blew out so many light bulbs that he it became a terrible expense for him. And I had to laugh because I've heard that from other contactees. Personally, and Bud Hopkins talked about that as well. The contactees have a huge light bulb budget <laughs> because they keep blowing them out. So this is the bioelectric field that has somehow been expanded or strengthened, or I don't know, but I think it has something to do with that. Another contactee I talked to said, every time I walk under a street light, it goes out. I'm like, well, yeah, we've all experienced that. She's like, well, no. It, yeah, <laughs> I think the bioelectric, the human bioelectric field, the signal strength, I mean, it it drops off of the square of you know distance, right? Just with the, you know, just the, the electromagnetic field. But I want to say it's like four inches outside. You can you can you can measure it. I mean, it, it, there's variation among different different people, like based on again this is i'm reading this book actually speaking of quantum <laughs> interest in quantum physics oh it's, yeah uh, are you familiar with this i i have not read it but i have familiar with the title stalking the wild pendulum yeah but it makes it makes an attempt to try to connect the scientific and quantum realm with other experiences but the, the first two or three chapters are all about this is how nature works all the way down to the atom to and everything is it's mostly empty space which we all know but everything for the most part can be described as a wave of some sort and yeah. you know things resonate at different frequencies so, and then there's resonances so if you put a bunch of grandfather clocks next to each other at, at different different rates because of the vibration in in the air, they will eventually sync up very quick, quickly into the same resonant frequency. And that's just, I mean, that's science. It's not any woo-woo stuff. But there's a lot of things in nature, even the way that human beings vibrate, you know, if they express the, you know, kind of fear emotion, right? It's infectious, right? So there's anyway, I haven't gotten, I haven't that. gotten that far. I haven't gotten that far in the book, but that, that, it feels very much like that's, that's where it's going, where we kind of all jointly shape and manifest reality and the way that we behave and the way that we, the vibrations that each one of us puts off. And I think there's also something about like brain activity when you go into a meditative state, it's around seven hertz. And that's also the resonant frequency of the Earth's magnetic field. Yeah, there's definitely stuff to this in terms of the bioelectric field and relating to 
what we would call the aura or the etheric body, the astral body, and so forth. And I wrote a book on levitation, and some of these saints and other holy people who have levitated also emit visible light from their body in some cases. And there are modern day cases of this. People who are actually emitting visible light. So this is relating to the, you know, why a contactee might perhaps cause problems with electromagnetic instruments. Robert Monroe, the out of body guy, mm -hmm. um, was able to manipulate a compass with his hand. So he clearly had some abilities with able to, being able to direct, you know, a magnetic field from his body itself, which I think is linked to meditation. He did have two levitation, spontaneous levitation experiences in his life. Uh, it's linked to astral travel for sure. There's a lot of people who've reported levitation have reported extensive out of body experiences. St. Teresa of Avila, she had several eyewitness levitations and wrote in her own you know, autobiographies about her out-of-body experiences. Is this Mother Teresa you're talking about? No, St. Teresa of Avila is okay. a, a saint from, I think, the, oh gosh, 1600s, 1700s, thereabouts, uh, who is well known for having levitated in front full view of witnesses on like seven occasions. Have there ever been any video evidence of or has been any video evidence of this or oh yeah of human levitation absolutely there's a guy called uh narus yogi narus maha something maharada narus he's a living gentleman in japan who agreed to be photographed in levitation and there are you know I actually post i have an episode on my youtube channel where i covered his case he was photographed in a state of levitation seven to ten different occasions. Do do, do you share that in your in the oh, video? Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. It's uh, not just. A, it's what's not. What's the name? Uh, I know. I know how to find it, but for people who don't know how to find your channel, what's what's the channel? UFOs and the paranormal with Preston Dennett. <laughs> not very creative, but. That's what I call it. It's easy to find. It's easy to find. <laughs> yeah, I, I just know because I subscribe to it. So it's not, you know, it's very easy for me to find it. So, yeah, it's not a video of him, but there are videos out there on the internet. You can find them of people levitating. They're hard to verify, but I've seen a number of them. And I know it's a real phenomenon because it's in all cultures, it re reaches back 2,000 years. <laughs> Well, it, it's 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 fascinating because there's like there's so much evidence of this stuff out there, but if you're not looking for it, you don't you don't see it. It's really weird. Yeah. Right. Well, it's not mainstream to a large extent, but levitation. Speaking of that specifically, has been proven in a laboratory setting on at least four different occasions. Here, where Carrington proved it numerous times. It was is that proven. the same Carrington Carrington incident guy? No, no. Okay, it's different, but it was also proven by a group of scientists who investigated the medium Daniel Holm, and he also Carlos Mirabelli, the Brazilian Brazil's greatest medium. He had a whole panel of scientists. He completely freaked them out because <laughs> <laughs> when he levitated in front of them, this has been proven more than once. There was another famous medium. Oh, she traveled across Europe and convinced a bunch of people. Her name will come to me. Yeah, this has been. Not, that's not Helena Blavatsky, is it? No. The Russian? No, no. Okay. She she was in the 1800s. Can't quite remember her name, but uh, definitely it's been proven <laughs> well beyond the shadow of a doubt. Human levitation, for sure. What other what other phenomena have we not covered that? That's kind of you know may may or may not be loosely associated with paranormal UFO experiences. Oh, I mean it goes on and on. Superhuman strength, invisibility, multiplication of food, immunity to cold. Some of this has been experiments have been done with various yogis. Um, so that, so you so talk about super superhuman strength. So just a quick aside. So there's a video. 
a short on my site, not a short, but a, a, like a short video clip on, on my site that's based off a longer video clip that I did with horror writer uh, Laird Barron. And he spent a lot of time in Alaska. And there was this scrawny guy, pot-bellied guy he used to work with who, you know, he just wasn't much of a, he was lazy. He would like get winded very quickly, wasn't, wasn't very strong. But there was a, you know, another gentleman they were working with who was, you know, one of these guys that walked around with his shirt off, just massive. And they had an arm, arm wrestling competition. So, he, you know, this strong guy is just crushing everybody, just dominating. He must be 250, right? 250 pounds. This other guy's maybe, you know, anywhere between a buck 20 to a buck 50. <laughs> and, this guy's, you know, smoking, and he, he tells Laird, I'm going to watch, I'm going to go take this guy's money. And, you know, Laird's like, okay, whatever. He just, like, he's just going to watch this guy lose. So he sits down, and, like, the like the massive guy just can't move him. He just can't. And then he just, you know, the scrawny guy just wins. So Laird goes back to the guy and says, I, I, like, how did you how did you do that? Like, how, and it's just like, it's, I don't, I can't explain it, but somebody told him once that if you just imagine a line coming straight through your arm and passing through the center of the earth and you just tell yourself it can't be moved. He's like, whenever I do that, I, I can't be moved. He's like, it's either me standing or, you know, an arm wrestling competition, et cetera. <laughs> you know, just, Weird, weird, freakish, you know, random stories like that. Anyway, yeah. Uh, well, but go on. You're talking about superhuman strength, and yeah, these are what in yogic tradition, the Yoga Sutras, it's called a uh, cities, S I D D A T S, superhuman abilities that manifest on the pathway to spiritual evolution, which are sometimes called obstacles because people can become, you know, entrenched or obsessed with these abilities which can block your spiritual progress but these are markers that manifest and again natural human abilities teleportation that would be another so these are all things that human beings apparently do have the ability to do and there are numerous accounts if you i read butler's lives of the saints which is a multi-volume set each book like 800 pages double so like er like Funny every saint, print, right? every saint has to have demonstrate a miracle, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's before their life or after their death or or three miracles. It's something like that, right? Yeah, hey, hey, geography is you know basically biographies of the saints and one of the first forms of writing because these guys were thaumaturges, wonder workers, who had the ability to tame wild beasts or multiply food or. I mean, all kinds of stuff that sounds absolutely crazy. But no, I don't think it is crazy. I think this was real. These were guys who spent their life in meditation, largely in prayer. And this manifested all kinds of abilities. St. Gerard of Magella, he's one of my favorite. <laughs> I'm not really a religious guy. but I found this stuff fascinating because it's got parallels to what we're seeing today with contactees who are displaying some of these abilities, who can, you know, gosh, Daniel Holm was a, a medium who did display superhuman strength. He lifted up an, an enormous log. And there are many hundreds of accounts of people who lift cars off of people, you know, a car that's fallen off of a jack. Just recently, I saw it on one of these shows, a tractor fell on these two girls' father together they lifted this tractor up well and part of that's shooting. adrenaline too right yes to a certain extent but the, you should not be able to just biologically speaking lift up a certain amount of weight it's just not biologically possible <laughs> as we understand it there's something mm -hmm. going on here and that was a good example because they were, could not should not have been able to do it so i don't know this is something i think definitely deserves more research but I will say that this is specifically listed in the Yoga Sutras, which are traced back to Patanjali, some guy who taught people how to do all this stuff. 
And so this is a pathway to spiritual enlightenment. And if you look at the accounts of Buddha or Jesus or any of these saints, they displayed an enormous amount of these abilities. It's crazy the miracles that are attributed to, you know, uh, Siddhartha Gautama Buddha. Yeah, I think you had a whole episode on the phenomena of walking on water. Yes, because that's often people think, oh, it's just Jesus who did that. No, it's not. There's a dozen cases more than of people who have been seen doing this. And some of them were very widely viewed. I mean, crowds of people watched it happen. So this could be completely mythological, if that's the way you want to go with it. But <laughs> there's firsthand eyewitness accounts. So I don't think it is mythological. I think people reported seeing this happen. And we don't see it as much today for a number of reasons, because we're very scientifically minded. There's a lot of skepticism. It's very hard to get these stories distributed in terms of, you know, what in the media. But the fact is, we're not nearly as religious a, a species as we were. You know, priests and the priesthood used to be something that was very prominent in the Middle Ages. The first son became a priest, I think, or, or the second or third. seventh son. So, oh, or right. actually, maybe, maybe it was. It was, it it was, was one the of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with no in the nobility, it was usually the second son, I think, because the first yeah, son. It was much, much more common. So I think that's why we see so many monks and priests. You know, the, remember that series, The Flying Nun? <laughs> Yeah, um, with Sally Field, I thought that was completely ridiculous. But turns out that it comes from truth. There's an enormous number of first ten accounts of flying nuns, and it's in every darn culture on our planet, pretty much without exception. Cases from Japan and Russia and all across Africa, the Native Americans. And I mean, it's there if you research it. We are not who we think we are. This is actually a major ET agenda, by the way. This is one of their main things. They really are trying to wake people up to our own abilities. So I think that's why we see contactees displaying a lot of this. All right, my friend. I think we can uh, end on that note. Thank you again for covering a wide range of, of topics on this particular episode. And, uh, you know, for folks that, you know, want to see Preston again, what, you know, put in the comments, what sort of episodes you'd like to see topics you'd like to see covered. Thanks, Preston. Nate, thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. Additionally, if you have any feedback, please put something in the comments below. And lastly, if you want to watch the full episode of this clip, you can find it above. Thanks again for watching.